Discover the exquisite beauty of Islam with our exclusive poster collection showcasing the 99 names of Allah. Each poster meticulously presents the Arabic name, pronunciation and English translation, embodying the essence of our Creator. Elevate your surroundings with these high-quality designs that not only serve as art, but also offer a glimpse into the profound beauty of Islamic culture. Immerse yourself in the collection and unveil the magnificence of the 99 names. Links in the description box. All right, guys, welcome back to the channel. If you're new, my name is Bobby. Guys, pretty interesting video today. We're going to react to my Muslim parents disowned me for converting to Christianity from Allah to Jesus by the channel Dennis Falcon. The reason why I react to this video is not to mock the guy. Quite the opposite, actually. I come from a similar background, just in reverse. I come from an Orthodox Christian background. My parents are Orthodox Christians, and I accepted Islam, alhamdulillah. And therefore, I, of course, stand firm in my belief that Islam is the truth and not Christianity. But when it comes down to the parents' part, as I already said, I can relate because at first, when I accepted Islam, my parents broke off the contact completely. And unfortunately, to this very day, I still haven't talked to my father. Therefore, I can understand and sympathize a little bit when it comes down to the family dynamics, not so much when it comes down to the religious dynamics after all. Guys, before we jump into the video, do me the favor and leave me a thumbs up if you enjoy my work. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already and check out the links in the description box to further support my work. And now, with no further ado, let's have a look. What's up, guys? Welcome back to the channel. What's my up? name is Dennis, and today I'm going to be sharing with you about the time that I shared my belief in Christianity to my Muslim parents. Boy, was that scary. Now, the actual moment where I shared my faith with my parents is going to be towards the end of the video, but I'm going to give you some background so you have some context. Both my mom and dad were born in Turkey in Istanbul. They met each other in New York and they had me in Florida. We're neighbors, I was raised basically. Muslim. I'm from I believe that Allah was God. We believe that he was a power and it was a distant God that was... I don't want to be too dismissive right off the bat, but when people say such things, we used to believe that Allah is God. I can clearly see that they didn't do their research because what is Allah? What does Allah mean? Allah is simply the Arabic term for God. And guess what, dear Christian, now that you believe in Jesus, simply ask yourself the question, what language did Jesus speak? Then you find out, whoopsie, it was Aramaic. And then you do a further Google search and you will find out, well, in Aramaic, the word is as well, Allah, Allah, Allah. It is the same root word because guess what? It is a Semitic language after all. And this is what it boils down to. Allah simply means God. Jesus, on the other hand, does not mean God. Go figure. Jesus is a name, a name for a human, a name for a human prophet, for the Messiah. Name him what you will, but most definitely not for God. And this is why, yes, it is true. Instead of worshiping Allah, you went from Allah to Jesus. You start worshiping Jesus, a man, rather than God. I believe that Allah was God. We believe that he was a power. And it was a yeah. distant God that was a judge whom we just had to do as many good things as possible, be a good person, do good works, and hopefully one day we make it to paradise. Yeah, yet again, unfortunately, we can clearly see that this guy didn't do his research because of a lack of knowledge. He went out of Islam and into Christianity. If he would truly research and look into Christianity, I'm sure he would drop out as well because he would find many discrepancies alone in the Bible and then further into the so-called church fathers, etc., etc., you name it, was once you see how Christianity was established, created, you would drop out right away because it cannot hold the criticism that Islam actually can. 
But nevertheless, be that as it may, he talked about Allah being some sort of distant God. Within the Quran, we find that Allah is as close to you as your jugular vein. But be that as it may, even if we discard the Quranic verse completely, we don't even look at it, then we of course have to ask you the question, how about the Christian God? Is the Christian God super close to you all the time? Of course, Christians will claim that, yes, it's a personal relationship with Jesus. Where is Jesus? Do you see Jesus? Do you hang out with him? Do you talk with him? Of course not. So this distance that he talks about is simply natural. There will always be a natural distance between you as a mere creation and the creator. The creator is exalted. And this is the same principle within Christianity if you truly look into the orthodox teachings. Because the essence of God is ultimately unknowable. No Christian has ever seen the essence of God let alone the Father. Nobody has seen the Father, but allegedly only the Son. And this is what it boils down to. The true relationship that is described within the Bible between the Father and the Son is experienced by Jesus and God. You, on the other hand, still end up having this distance to the Heavenly Father or the essence of God. And therefore, the principle there is exactly the same. You simply believe now that you have an interpersonal relationship with Jesus. Jesus. But God is transcendent of all of that. He is the creator of the creation. He is the creator, not the creation. And therefore, of course, he will have a natural distance to you. So naturally, as I grew up, my relationship with Allah diminished because there wasn't a relationship. It was a distant thing, right? And this video isn't a testimony video, so I won't share about how I came to know the Lord. But basically, I was one of those kids where I was never going to believe in something simply because my family believed in it, which I think okay. is the case with a lot of people. I see a lot of people who are Christian because they were born to it or they're Muslim because they were born to it. They never had that self-discovery. They never had that moment where they seeked the actual truth. Yes, and this is something that I can absolutely relate with because growing up in an Orthodox Christian background, nobody ever truly asked questions and nobody was truly super practicing after all. So therefore, I had to go out of my own way and find the truth. I searched in all kinds of venues, Buddhism, Hinduism, shamanism, psychedelics, meditation, etc., etc., you name it, until, alhamdulillah, finally I found Islam. Why? Because I kept on searching for the truth. And this is something that we have to really talk about here, because after all, he says that he wouldn't have accepted what his parents believed. He wanted to find the truth by himself. Kudos, that is a good trait to have. But you have to look into the religions. Islam encourages such seeking for truth. The Quran always tells us to ponder, to reflect, to question, and to seek our answers. And guess what? Within Islam, we have answers. In Christianity, on the other hand, this is not encouraged. They tell you over and over again that the Trinity is a mystery, that nobody truly understands it. You can imagine it like an egg. There is an eggshell, there is egg white, egg yolk, three in one, after all, one God. They tell you that you cannot think about such things things because they are eternally mysterious. And this is not the case within Islam. Quite the opposite. Seeking of truth, seeking of knowledge is absolutely encouraged within Islam. Reading, understanding, pondering, reflecting, all of this is found within the religion of Islam and not within the religion of Christianity. And therefore, this is an open invitation. This is my offer to you. If you truly want to seek knowledge, you can come on my live stream and we can invite a student of knowledge, a sheikh even, I'm well connected, alhamdulillah, and I'm sure they will be able to answer all the questions that you have. Right to find it for themselves. Even before I was saved, I tried many other things. But Buddha, saved from Krishna, what? Law of Attraction, Manifestation. I tried everything else. It didn't work. I can Jesus relate. was my last resort, my last option, right? And I hated Jesus. I wanted nothing to do with him. But I finally got to a point where I would... Yeah, yet again, the guy's just exposing himself. He says he hated Jesus. What kind of Muslim were you then? Because no Muslim hates Jesus. No real Muslim hates Jesus. Jesus is a prophet within Islam, one of the mightiest messengers, the Messiah indeed. And therefore, we, as the Quran states, do not distinguish between the prophets. Therefore, if you hate Jesus, you're obviously not a Muslim. And this just shows yet again that you didn't research Islam properly. You just jumped to conclusions. The Bible. Now... 
once I began reading the Bible, you got to realize I'm in a Muslim household. If I'm caught reading this thing, it ain't going to be good for me. You know what I'm saying? So I would wake up at 4.45, 5 a.m. and begin hunting God is what I call it, right? I didn't know where to start in this book. I didn't know what Maybe to read. I didn't page. know what would be important to read. But I was hunting because I was at that moment seeking the truth and trying to figure out who God was, right? And the more I read it, the more it began piercing my heart, right? And the more the words started coming alive to me. But the thing is, and a lot of people, they they just stop at religion, right? But you have to pair the scripture up with an encounter. That's where the transformation is. That's where the real belief is that'll sustain you. I was reading the scripture so much and I was like, wow, this is really speaking to me. And maybe it is the truth, but I needed an encounter. And I did have several encounters that sealed the deal for me. And I was like, Jesus, you're the only way. Yeah, this is something that we can, of course, not speak about. This is subjective experience. As I said, I come from a background of seeking spirituality myself as well. Shamanism, psychedelics, etc. I had plenty of deep, spiritual, transformative experiences. But in the end, this is subjective. This is what I experience. And this is not an objective standard after all. Within Orthodox Christianity, actually, this is discouraged. It is discouraged to seek spiritual experiences on your own because you could be deceived. You're just a mere human. You cannot truly know what you encountered. You encountered something and now you're jumping to conclusions. But nevertheless, you're still pairing it, of course, with the Bible. The Bible, after all, for you is the objective standard. And now there you go again. Within Islam, the Quran is the objective standard. We measure everything by the Quran and the Sunnah, of course. The point being is you read the Bible over and over and over again, and then you had a subjective experience. I believe you. I'm not doubting it. But the point of the story is, how do you reference now that it is the truth just because you experience something? I can tell you about Muslims that had spiritual experiences encountering Jesus as well. But they saw him as the messenger. They did not see him as God Almighty. And therefore, you will still have to come back to some sort of standard, which you do, in your case, the Bible. But if you truly read the Bible from cover to cover, you would, of course, as I said, find the discrepancies. You would wonder, why is Jesus so peace-loving? But you look into the Old Testament, which is allegedly God, which is allegedly then Jesus, and they're contradicting each other over and over again. Not to mention all the numerical mistakes within the Bible, etc., etc., you name it. You can imagine, the Bible says, right? We're new creations, sorry about that, Lord. We're new creations in Christ, right? All old things have passed away. So naturally, as I'm putting my faith in the Lord, I'm changing. The way I speak is changing. The way I think is changing. My comments on certain things are changing. And my mother was starting to notice, right? And I had a Christian girlfriend. So my mom's... Yeah, yet again. So having a Christian girlfriend apparently under Christianity is A-OK. -okay. But this is not Islamic, nor is it truly Christian, right? This is adultery. This is fornication. Even if you guys did not have sex, it would still be immoral to be that close with a woman that you have not married. But be that as it may, he claims coming from a Muslim household, you did not truly practice. It is absolutely haram, of course, to have a girlfriend. This is not what a practicing Muslim does, nor is it what a practicing Christian would do. But nevertheless, Christianity nowadays is seen as religious religion light. They even say that, oh, well, it's not a religion, it's a relationship and the law has been abandoned. Even though if you do the work, the studies yourself, you would find out that Jesus never said that he would abandon the law. It's absolutely laughable. So people essentially get rid of religion altogether and they swap it for their own desires. Right, going off, right? The spiritual realm is very real and you could tell there was starting to be a tension that was developing right picture two pit bulls just being held back about to be unleashed into a fight they don't want it but the confrontation is there right and there's tension and i was like oh my gosh like this is so weird she's like do you read the bible and i'm like nah man i don't read bible like what are you talking about i don't read it she's like you have bible i saw bible i'm like i no, nah, i don't read it like it's, it's just there right i was denying god but 
the thing is, my family and I, we never had a strong family tie connection. As I mentioned, my dad wasn't around. My mom really verbally and mentally abused me. No one's perfect. They try their best. God bless them. But the more I'm reading this word, the more I'm realizing, dang, it doesn't feel right denying God. I would convince myself, hey, look, I don't got to tell my parents what I believe. Like everyone can believe what they want. We're all we're all good here. You know what I'm saying? Until I read this one verse and I'll read it to you guys. It's found in the Gospel of Matthew. Praise God. Let's see. It's in Matthew. Who wrote the Gospel of Matthew? 10. Matthew. Verses okay. 32 and 33. I'll read it to you. Therefore, whoever confesses me before men, him I will also confess before my Father who is in heaven. But whoever denies me before men, him I will also deny before my Father who is in heaven. When I read that verse, my heart dropped. I was like, you do realize I got Muslim parents, right? Like, you know that, right? Like, you obviously know that. What do you mean? I, what do you mean? I got Okay, I had enough. All right, this is it for today's video. I'm going to cut it off here. We're at minute 533 into the video. The video still continues for eight more minutes. If you want to check out the whole thing, you can find it on the channel, Dennis Falcon. I basically said everything I needed to say throughout this video. It is very shallow after all and comes down to a lack of understanding. The passage that he read out was about denying Jesus Christ. And if you deny Jesus Christ, then he will deny you in front of his father, i.e. God. But this is not what Christianity teaches. This statement alone already debunks Christianity. Yes, it is that hilarious because if you really look at that Bible verse, you will understand that Jesus said, if you deny him as the messenger of God, then he will deny you in front of his father, his father, right? His father. God. This is basically what it boils down to if you really look into that passage. And therefore, within that passage, yet again, you cannot find that Jesus supposedly is God himself. But this is exactly what Christianity teaches. And this is why Christianity is in constant conflict with its own scripture. Within the Bible, you have so much conflict when it comes down to the new teaching of Christianity. Why? Because the Old Testament is essentially a Jewish book and now they try to mold it into a Christian book. They try to tell you that Yahweh is essentially Jesus and this is God, a trinity, blah, 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 you name it. Point being, this verse alone debunks trinity, debunks Jesus being God. And yet again, if you would have some background knowledge about Islam, just a little bit, you would understand that if you deny Jesus within Islam, you would be denied as well as a believer, of course. Because as I said, we make no distinctions between the prophets. You cannot be a Muslim and deny Jesus. That's absolutely impossible. You cannot be a Muslim and deny Noah. You cannot be a Muslim and deny Abraham. You cannot deny the prophets. And this is what it means to be a Muslim. You do not deny any prophets, any messengers. You believe in one God alone, and you do not believe that that God is a human. You do not believe that that God is a stick, a stone, a bone, a mountain, some sort of deity with four hands, a blue demon, an elephant head God, or anything of those sorts. You believe in the ultimate transcendence of our Creator. He is the most exalted one. He is the greatest. This is our creator. He's not comparable to anything within creation. This is what we worship. Because at the point where the creator becomes comparable to something in creation, you lost the plot. Now you can do exactly what has been described within the Old Testament. You can worship the golden calf. You can worship idols. And this is what Christianity devolved into, of course. Because you see people... Not worshipping, but venerating icons after all. They have icons, they have statues, they pray to saints, they pray to Mother Mary, they pray to Jesus, they pray to everybody but God, it seems. And this is what you unfortunately haven't understood. You deviated from the pure monotheism away from one God into worshipping men. 
This is nothing new. This is not a new religion. This is paganism. This has been practiced over and over again. And even your own scripture is warning you against. Return to the pure monotheism of one God alone. See the messengers for what they are. They're exalted creations, but this is what they are. They're creations and not the creator. I yet again hereby invite you formally to come over on my live stream and we can invite, as I said, a sheikh or a student of knowledge and I'm certain that he will clarify everything you need to know, inshallah. All right, guys, but this is it for today's video. If you enjoyed it, leave it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already and check out the links in the description box to further support my work. And now, as always, may God bless you all. Much love and peace.